I'm just going to leave it open. Nope, they're Sorry. already here. Okay, okay, are. Are. Actually, people. we're going to uh, motion to go into the meeting. So can I get a motion to enter the meeting, Xavier, and the second from Bill, all in favor? Thank you for joining us tonight. We're just going to quickly stand and say the pledge, and then I think we're in for something really special. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Sorry. Do we need to do an emergency procedure first, or we can do it right after? What are we doing now? <laughs> Going to remain standing. Okay. Yep. Yes. God bless America. It's a Twilight Zone oh episode. <laughs> One more time. Right. Bring you outside. Oh, well, does it? Oh. Head to the courtyard. <laughs> They're probably like, where are we? Exit stage right. No. Left. Left. <laughs> How about one more round of applause for them as they go? <laughs> that was an exceptional job. It was beautiful. I hyper. And no one stopped. They just kept going. Just go. That was a really beautiful performance and obviously very fitting given the week that we find ourselves in. Um, as a Board of Education, we'd like to just ask that we all take a moment of silence um, to th remember all the victims from 9-11. One moment of silence, please. Thank you very much. All right. So that brings us to the regular order of business. A few reminders, most of you here have been here before, but um, in the case of an emergency, we have exits toward the back and towards the sides. Just make your way calmly to the exits. Also here and all of our school grounds are smoke-free properties, so no smoking. And uh, we just, the next thing on the list was the cham chamber choir's um, performance. So <laughs> that was very lovely. All right, that's going to bring us to our meeting minutes of August 26th, 
2019. So I need a motion to approve the meeting minutes. Can I get a motion? Michelle and a second from Xavier. All in favor? Thank you. Okay, we have a bunch of FYIs tonight. We have the budget appropriation reports for general school lunch and special aid funds as of 831.19. We have an FYI of budget transfers and FYI of revenue status reports as of 831.19 and a treasurer's report. So I need a motion to approve the treasurer's report as of July 2019. Motion. Motion from Tom and a second from Linda. All in favor? Thank you. And also the warrants. I'm looking for a motion for the warrants, which were certified 82819. Can I get a motion? Um, Xavier and a second from Linda. All in favor? Thank you very much. All right. Well, obviously, a bunch of us have been to a bunch of things. So if any of the board members want to jump in. <clears throat> Does anybody have anything that they attended that they want to speak about? I just want to uh, once again <clears throat> commend George Austin on his work during the summer. We went on the uh, building tour and got to see a lot of the work that was done in, in many of the buildings. And it amazes me the, the breadth and depth of work that was done in the amount of time it was done so that everyone could return to class and be in, you might, you might not see it, you might not see the new, new boilers at Woodhull, uh, not really, you know, a sexy thing to look at, but honestly, it was, it was phenomenal work. Everything he's done throughout the summer, everything he continues to do, and he takes pride in this district, and he takes pride in everything that gets done here, so I just wanted to, again, mention uh, George and, and uh, his efforts over the summer. Yeah, I think that's well called for. Thank you again to George and his crew. Um, anybody else? <clears throat> I'll just say, Jen, that I'm so sorry that I missed Superintendent's Conference Day. It was my first day of class, but I would have loved to be there and wish the teachers a great year and, and administration and everyone else and thank them for all they do. You know, and I'm sure Jim is going to talk about that a little yeah. more at length, but I will say that I, I've been, I've, <laughs> this is my ninth year on the board and I've attended, this is my ninth superintendent's conference day that I attended and it was the best one yet. I thought the speaker was so inspiring and I really... I just thought there was a great feeling in the room, and uh, it was really, I think, a really, really excellent way to kick off a year. Oh, and the other thing I'll mention, I don't know if I feel like, I don't think I mentioned it the last time because it was before, but um, the ATH hosts their kindergarten welcoming, you know, welcome sort of party at the firehouse, and I went to that too, and it was really well attended, and there were a lot of really excited kindergarten kids mm -hmm. coming there, and it, it's just a joy to see the little ones that are coming up, and some of them are actually my students from my <laughs> nursery school, so I get a huge kick out of going over to that event, but I just think it's such a nice way to open the community up to the brand new parents and see what kind of, you know, what kind of people we are, because it's a really special place, and I just think it really reflects that, so thank you to all the teachers that took part in it. James, that was really great. Anybody else? All right, Mr. Polanski, do you want me to keep rambling on or do you want to go? <laughs> rambling is your prerogative. I, you know, I'm good at it too, but I'm going to throw it to you. Okay, well, I think uh, Tom did just do to the um, capital work that has been done over the summer, tremendous volume of work, and, and my hope is that um, everybody really enjoyed coming back to some squeaky clean buildings and, and some new structures within. So as Tom mentioned, some of the things you can't see, but many of the things you can. And we have a lot of terrific people here who did a great deal of work this summer. Uh, it is, I think I mentioned it at the last meeting, although it is a time when there are less people around, it is probably a time when more work is done because those people aren't around. So um, it led to a great opening. I, I would like to, the group that just performed uh, they're among so many that we, we look at as the pride and joy of Huntington. Uh, they also, uh, students came back on Wednesday. On Tuesday, we opened with Superintendent's Conference Day, and the first act on Superintendent's Conference Day was that group singing a parody that they had not only performed but written prior to. And honestly, that's the way to open a conference that's day. really good. They were terrific, and, and you'll, you'll see and hear from, from this group uh, these folks on many occasions throughout the year and and I just ask for something that is an automatic just enjoy every minute of it because they are they are terrific. Uh, Jen mentioned the speaker on conference day uh, we had uh, Natalie McGee here who 
uh, is really going to help us further our work in terms of cultural proficiency. And, and this is something that among the many things that will be focused on uh, this year throughout the district across the buildings. So we look forward to, to furthering that work. And I, we'll speak a little bit more to that when we get to the goals conversation mm -hmm. that, that will take place shortly. Uh, it was a terrific opening week. and, and um, now, please follow us on social media if you are not already doing so. We have, um, obviously, a, 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 web, a website, a web page that is updated routinely, daily, with stories about our kids and, and about the things going on in the district. And, and it's, uh, it, it's something you really do want to look at on a daily basis, because if not, you'll miss something. Uh, our Facebook page, our Twitter feed, our Instagram feeds for all the ages and, and every, every interest, really, please don't hesitate to follow. And hopefully, you get a, a sense of what our kids felt when they came back on opening day. Um, I actually welled up a couple of times, and, and it, it's, it, it makes you feel good when you see the kids that happy on opening day. I had the chance to ride uh, a Flower Hill bus on the first day, which is, always a, uh, which is always an experience when kindergartners are getting on for the first time. It's more of an experience for the parents than, than for them, but uh, just uh, good feelings all around. And I'd like to thank our, our transportation folks and, and Mr. Hender for as seamless an opening in terms of transportation as I've experienced here in a decade. It was, uh, you know, you're going to deal with your little glitches and some things that have to be ironed out, uh, but working together, we, we got a lot of great work done this summer and really minimized any, anything beyond just some, some minor changes that, that needed to be made. Um, beginning of the year brings to us a lot of opening events. Jen mentioned the ATH kindergarten party, which always draws a crowd, and, and the kids have a great time at the firehouse. We have our elementary block parties. I know Washington held theirs on Friday. They showed um, they, they showed a movie, and they were able to to, to, to do theirs in spite of the, the weather. Uh, the other three will be held this coming Friday, and hopefully a little bit better weather uh, agrees with them. And, and it's always a lot of fun to get the kids out there and socializing on a family basis for the first, uh, for the first couple of weeks. This Saturday, Unity Day Parade. I know we'll have at least four, if not more, groups participating from Huntington. It starts with a parade that goes from Huntington High School to Stimson Middle School, where a fair will be held. So the inter-district, there are multiple districts involved. Uh, parade steps off at 10 AM. And we moved it up a little bit this year, because I know the high school varsity football team opens their season at home on, on Saturday at 2. And the marching band can't be in five places at once, as much as they try. <laughs> The following weekend, it comes quickly this year, homecoming. The game uh, parade and game are on Saturday the 21st. And, and thanks to Mr. Cusack and his, his crew, we have a new event occurring on Thursday night, which is uh, a district-wide bonfire, I guess a big fire. The Huntington Manor Fire Department will be there to support this and to make sure it is safe. There will also be a number of games and, and, and food, and, and it's a, a carnival atmosphere, a lot of stuff for little kids. So please, this is, an, this, this is for elementary as well as for secondary. It's going to be a true, to, true to form community uh, event. Sorry. Who builds the fire? Um, <coughs> the fire department pretty much is, is going to set it up mm -hmm. so that it's safe. Asking. Yes, no. I, is this the question? <laughs> question. No, they, 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 they set it up so that it's... It's as safe as can be, the and they are. They <laughs> I just meant I thought maybe there was like a company that does this sort of thing. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> a, the, sure. the company is called the Huntington Fire. Manor Got Fire it. Department. <laughs> um, two more quick things I'll share. One very briefly, but you had this group on stage singing their rendition of God Bless America just beautifully. So beautiful. I would like to acknowledge we have a number of students, and quite a few actually, that have been named to the NISMA All State Ensemble. So just to give them their 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 just due oh, here. Them on chamber. Yes, I, I will. Uh, thank you. No, I'm just them. saying that they all are. They They're, weren't here tonight. Yes. But okay. They all are. Uh, string Orchestra: Kyle Perea, Grace Wildermuth, both play double bass. The wind Ensemble: Eliana Eng, Nathan um, Musso, and Michael Reed, members of our marching band, mixed chorus, and also members of the chamber choir. Catherine Eichenberger. Keenan Lyons, Abby, uh, Abby Semmelsberger, Chloe Buffone. I saw at least three of them tonight. Mm -hmm. um, and we have alternates, Joshua Avador, Emerson Forbes, Eliana Eng, who is actually chosen to play flute, but an alternate for piccolo, and Nick Danseglio, also on the flute. So this is a, a nice number to come from a district of this <coughs> size. So congratulations to them. Yes. Yeah, a lot of kids to me, yeah. Yeah, it, it definitely is. And I'll also mention I can't go any further than this because it is embargoed until Wednesday, but we do have a three National Merit Scholarship Program oh semifinalists, oh, um, which is uh, wow. a nice number for, for Huntington High School. Mm -hmm. So congratulations awesome. to 
to everybody for contributing to that. So we'll leave it at that. Can you tell me where does the Unity Parade kick off from? Unity, <laughs> Unity Day Parade kicks off from Huntington High School. Okay. It starts. All it right. Starts it did like last year. Yep. Okay. Very good. And it's straight down Oakwood Road, and it is a little bit further than it appears. And will the road be closed? <laughs> we did check the train schedule. And the road is closed. <laughs> no traffic coming the other direction. Um, this brings us to public commentary. Uh, and again, I'll just remind everybody that's here. It's three minutes. That you, you have to um, please don't use any personal names. And we only have one thing on the items for discussion and action. That's board goals. But is anybody interested in coming to the mic? Excellent. <laughs> All right, we're going to keep going then. We're going to go on to board goals. Do I need to get out of your way? Yes. yes. No, thank you. Right, because the blinding light is coming. I'm going to scooch over and get Excellent. I'm just seeing all these texts that uh, apparently missed. Photo time. We handled it. Nice job. Okie dokie. Are they up, Kat? Yep. Okay. We're up. So this collection reflects the conversations that were held at both August meetings. Um, we don't have to adopt them tonight. If we can, that would be great. But if it takes a little bit more time, that's also fine. Just a reminder that once the goals are established, that will set into motion my finalizing my action plan for the year. And we then kind of pass these down to our building level action plan. So I leave it in your hands now to talk about some of the things that we have discussed and some of the changes that were made since since last week, or since last meeting. All right, well, I mean, we have them right in front of us. We've had them for a while. Is there, are there, you know, any comments? I know that you weren't able to be at the meeting, so maybe I'll throw it to you, Xavier, if you had any input. I, I'm, I'm encouraged by it. You know, I really like the fact that we've moving ahead I think we're leaps and bounds of where we were when I first got on his board um, we're looking to be culturally responsive and, and transformative I, I think that's something that in light of the district and what it looks like and the numbers and, and who is in our district we're starting to understand what our needs are and I mean I look at the professional development plan um, part of that is um, looking at needs and data analysis for what our district looks like and something that I've been asking for, for for some time, and I know that we've been making steps in that direction, and, and I'm very proud to look at this district goal and this uh, this Board of Education district goal because I think it really reflects the needs of this district. Um, the, my only desires is that we keep going in this direction. We keep doing the things that we've been doing. Maybe we look at our athletic department. Um, I know that we have about 19 uh, gym teachers, and if we looked at the gym teachers the same way that we look at the way we are trying to broaden our diversity in, in our uh, teachers, that would be great um, because we really do need to see a little more um, dual language in, in some of our gym teachers and some of those 19 gym teachers. I'm not saying that we need to replace because we've got excellent gym teachers right now, but if there is an opportunity that there's an opening or we add, Maybe that's where we look. Um, gym teachers are, are very important. They've got the opportunity to encourage students to participate in, in different sports. Um, there are many sports that the entire community can participate in, and it'd be nice if we could see the diversity on the field the way we see it in the school. Can I, uh, one thing that I wanted to say in, um, after listening to the speaker on Superintendent's Conference Day is that, uh, what occurred to me is that I, the, what we think about as culture and how broad that term is and how we need to remember that the way that she described all the different things that go into a person's culture. The C's. Um, yeah. Big C's and little C's. Uh, yeah. And um, I think I even leaned over to Xavier at one point and I said I never really thought of it as part of my culture, but when she was talking about the culture in your family and I said to Xavier, you know, when my children were diagnosed with autism, it really changed the entire culture of my family. And so I think that that's just one example. There were lots of different things that she brought up that go into culture that we always need to be responsive to. And so that's why I like the goal as broad as it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I think goals Absolutely. are designed to be somewhat broad. Mm -hmm. we, we get more specific as we move down to objectives, and certainly as we focus on, on action planning, 
uh, we'll get to the things that are going to help us accomplish these goals, which I, I will share with, with you mine personally so that you have mm -hmm. uh, a chance to comment and, and help me frame it in any way you see fit in alignment with our goals. I think the goals, I, you know, I, like I said before, too, I really appreciate the thoughtful conversations we've been having over the goals because they're not just empty words. They really do reflect the kinds of things that we really are trying to reach as a district and, and things that are important to us and that we want to prioritize. I also think that the language has been cleaned up in a way that makes them much more clear and less like Bill was talking about at the last meeting where you know, we just kind of keep saying the same things, but they're not specific and that, you know, I feel like we're, again, like Xavier also has said, I think we've really have been heading in the right direction in terms of honing in on what's really important and, um, you know, and then of course working on, like you said, the action plans to get the district there. So I'm very comfortable with the goals as is. Is there anybody that wanted to add more that had concerns about any of the goals, any, anything like that? Is there a second page to it? I don't see the raise for the board members. Uh, <laughs> yeah, keep no, no. Looking. We, we already keep decided we're going to take what's looking. there and multiply it's it by a, 200. Yes. Right. <laughs> it's always oh, exponential. Yes. Spot. No question. <laughs> <laughs> Just to highlight a couple of things that no, changed since there. the last meeting. <laughs> um, number seven, I think that's one of the comments that that we just, yes. I think Bill had suggested once again that <clears> we <throat> take out salient. some things that are rolled over year after year that. We, we really have kind of come to a, a, a plateau with at this point, and that's why there is a strike through there. Uh, number, I'm sorry, that's that actually is the old number seven. Right. The existing number seven I modified <laughs> slightly to reflect some of the, the comments that were made in right. terms of outreach, <laughs> just if we can find ways to do it beyond what we see in each school to go into the broader community. Um, but you do have some new things here. You know, obviously we're, we're transitioning in a number of different uh, areas, disciplines, grade levels, et cetera. Uh, right now, leadership at the state level, state education department is in flux. Um, I am actually working <coughs> in, in alignment with my colleagues in the Suffolk County Superintendents Association to help frame what we're looking for in a new commissioner. Uh, but that's the, you know that's obviously something that's going to take a little bit of time. So the and some of the goals that they've announced are also major implications right. to so everything the, that we do. They're, they're talking about readjusting diploma pathways, the regents exams are under scrutiny, scrutiny. at this mm -hmm. point. So we, we may see or we may not see changes there because there are definitely two, two camps, two schools of thought and a lot of smaller camps in the middle. Uh, for those that haven't been following, they are talking about potentially reevaluating diploma requirements and New York State happens to be the only state in the nation that has 11 exams at the end of courses that are separate from each other. There are five that qualify as exit exams and they were looking at whether or not those are actually serving the purpose as appropriate graduation gatekeepers. So that conversation is, is ongoing. Uh, the, um, the Regents meetings in Albany this morning were actually delayed by about 40 minutes mm -hmm. because there was uh, protest uh, vaccination related. That's so there are some conversations that they'll probably have to pick up tomorrow, but that Regents discussion will probably carry on well past September meetings. Uh, culturally responsive, goal two is, is new and that's based on some of the work we, we, we started last year and certainly kicked off this year. Um, safety and security, number three. Focusing more, this is another change since last week, instead of focusing on responsible and transparent budget, which I, I would like to think we've accomplished at this point, but now to move further into energy efficiencies and and further analyzing the district's long range capital goals, capital plans. Technology, we, we changed number five a little bit to reflect, and, and one of the things that we have definitely, I think, made a point of communicating as administrators, as teachers, as staff members, is that we function, our, our, our goals here are much more attainable if we have connections with each other, with our kids, with the community. It's the relationships that are gonna carry us, that are gonna, that are gonna bring us to the next level. So that, that is addressed there to a certain degree in number five and the technology, now you see some pushback. I think I sent the, the board an article last yeah. week or the week mm -hmm. before, with all the technology in place, we, we, we cannot and should not promote it, it replacing conversation and face-to-face. -to -face. You know, too many kids these days have their heads in their phones and their devices and can't 
make eye contact in, in a face-to-face -face conversation. So we have to be active in making sure that that is, does not become a lost <coughs> art. Xavier mentioned hiring and retention. I, I do want to, I think I lost my connection here. Um, a lot of thought and energy has been dedicated to, and I can't Just go here. No, you, oh, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm just walking too quickly. <laughs> has been dedicated to looking at, at hiring practices. As a matter of fact, I attended a meeting this morning. Uh, we, as one of five districts, has, has been uh, accepted into a consortium. We have received, it's, it's a, it's a five-year grant, $100,000 a year, and it will be allocated among five districts to look internally and build some, some internal pipelines to help candidates with diverse backgrounds and the ability to take positions in lower supply, higher demand areas and to, to cultivate them internally, possibly from aid positions, from teacher assistant positions, and it's our responsibility to identify the candidates who, who may qualify, and they would certainly have to go through the process here, but uh, we would be able to facilitate their getting the education they need to move up in, in, in the educational ranks and possibly become teachers. So there is, um, and I guess ranks the, the wrong word there, but to get their teaching certification more so than anything else. We have been in contact with um, a number of different associations. I know every time something gets posted now, it's not just on OLAS. We are reaching out to, to various organizations that, that can help us with spreading the word that we're looking for this position or that position. So we've been in contact with uh, the Long Island Latino Teachers Association, the Long Island Black Educators Association, uh, New York State Association of Latino Administrators and, 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 and others, um, NAACP. We are trying to, to broaden our network so that we make sure that our postings are in places where people can see them and it's not just the traditional one place where you're only going, you, you may only see a, a, a more narrow number of candidates be, just because it's only in one place. So we're working diligently to, to really set the standard in terms of hiring practices. It's gonna take some time. Uh, we talked about the, the new number seven, adding the community outreach, um, professional development, professional learning opportunities, making sure that our staff members really get what they need. And not every staff member needs the same thing. It's what do they need to best support their kids. That's what it comes down to. And we don't want to lose sight of the, the wellness practices. And uh, Kathy and I have spoken on, on multiple occasions about uh, revamping our wellness policy and to, and to doing some, some moving forward there. Uh, and it started, it, it really starts with, with Whitson's in this particular situation. Uh, we've got some, some upgraded things for people to look at on the website, and we are going to, to continue to move forward in, in promoting change that we know, we hope, that, that certainly all will perceive as positive. I heard some unofficial reviews from elementary children <laughs> that Friday pizza day was much better than <laughs> you know, they are the critics that we look to on a weekly basis, so I have to start circulating and sampling the wares. <laughs> we know you like Waffle Bar Day. I do. Waffle Monday is one of my favorites. Mm. All right. Well, we just went through them. Are, is there anybody else that has any other comments or questions? Because I really think that we could, I, I think we're ready to approve the goals unless anybody has anything further that they wanted to follow up on another time. Did we do a motion and a second? I'll just add, well, we haven't yet. We're just doing kind of an open conversation yet. Yeah. Um, before we get to that, though, I'm also actually quite pleased with these. I like the way we have kind of made, made them more focused. Um, one of the things I want to make sure that we do, though, as a group to not only help ourselves, but help the administration in the implementation of these is to now hold ourselves accountable, not wait until June to say, ooh, how did we do on our goals? And I'd like to look at, we have a meeting January 13th. Let's put on the agenda right now, check in, and hit every one of these and see. You know, Maybe not every one of them will be touched, but if not, what's the plan for it? If not, why? Again, it because it's only if we're going to ask, you know, because we say these great lofty words, but in the end it's executed by a whole lot of other people. Yes, and so I think it's important for us to kind of stay on top of it and not just forget about this nice little exercise. So, so it's only fair to everyone else that we review how we're doing on it. I think it's an excellent suggestion. We can certainly formulate something to give you a sense of, of what we've seen in terms of progress and what we still see as needs at that point, and we can we can start the conversation from there. I think it's right. a great, a terrific idea. Yep, me too. Yes. Great Thank idea, you. though. Absolutely.
right. In that case, I'm going to look for a motion to approve our board goals of 2019-20. Wait, there's probably an official thing I can read. Hold on. <laughs> Everybody just wait a minute. There we go. There is. Uh, no, there's Actually, there not. There isn't. There isn't. I'm going to make it up right make, here. That <laughs> so I am looking for a motion to approve the Board of Education goals for 2019-20. That's it. I got a motion from Christine and a second from Xavier. Any comments or questions? All in favor? Excellent. Thank you, Thank everybody. Thank you for giving us our starting point. We appreciate yeah, it. That's, it was very well handled. All right. So that brings us to Ms. McCoy. It is upon recommendation from the Superintendent of Schools that the Board of Education approve CSE CPSE submissions as delineated. Okay, we've got those. Can I get a motion? I got one from Linda and a second from Michelle. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Great. Thank you. Oh, still with you. Upon recommendation from the Superintendent of Schools that the Board of Education adopt the attached district physical education plan for the 1920 school year. And we also saw that. Can I get a motion? Christine and a second. Uh, I got Linda down there. Did anybody have any comments or questions about this? I would, just reiterate, oh, yeah. I would just reiterate my previous comments with regards to our physical education plan that it uh, reflects a little bit more of what our goals are as a whole. Maybe for next year we can see that there. How, how, so one question is, how has this drastically changed or not drastically changed from what was existing? It hasn't drastically changed. Uh, we added this year K-3 to non-PE day activities under the direction of a PE teacher. We did curriculum writing this summer so that there would be an available menu of options for teachers to utilize during class time and the PE teachers are meeting with the teachers as grade levels, um, in their grade levels to kind of go over the menu and discuss how these could be implemented, kind of like brain, brain break activities, mm -hmm. videos that a lot of teachers are already using. So it's not really an add-on, but it really was um, solidified in the plan this year to ensure that we have the non-PE days, um, the correct amount of time. Um, under the supervision of a PE teacher. Okay. Okay. Cool being, I, I being creative with our time. I had a question too. Um, last year some kids came to me and asked about, and they, they were supposed to bring it to the board, but I guess they chickened out or whatever, but <laughs> <laughs> about having other types of PE available at the high school level. Um, dance perhaps or some other things or credit yeah. for other things that they do. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know you know in the regulations how that works but um for two reasons one just it's some for some students more enjoyable activity and other students it's just a uh, better use of their time you know as they see it <laughs> it's not going to specify in the regulations exactly what is to be included in the okay. curriculum but mm -hmm. it's certainly you know, we I, I'd, I'd like to think we make every effort to hear what they would like to see mm -hmm. and while we can't certainly accommodate everything mm -hmm. the ideas that they present would be taken very seriously and I think that to start uh, presenting those ideas to um, Mrs. McCarthy and, and Mr. Cusack, Mrs. Rothell, wherever they're coming mm -hmm. from that, that would be the start point. Okay. I mean the idea is to present them with a curriculum that they can engage in most comprehensively. Okay I'll encourage them to do that again. <laughs> Anybody else? All right then we have a motion to second all in favor everybody thank you it is upon recommendation from the superintendent of schools that the board of education adopt the attached district professional development plan for the 1920 school year okay can I get a motion I got a motion from Bill and a second from Xavier any questions or comments about the professional development plan I have comment and question it looks great um, actually two questions this no uh, Fe November 5th, Superintendent's Conference Day, mm -hmm. right? Are we going to be able to start implementing some of these programs at that conference day? On November 5th, we have um, a gentleman from Generation Ready coming in, so he'll be providing a half-day PD to the middle school staff and a half-day yeah. PD to the, to high, the school high school staff. staff. At the elementary level, we have parent-teacher conferences, conferences for right. the entire day, so we are unable to use him in that capacity. Right. We did provide some opportunities for teachers to attend that same training this summer, um, but unfortunately, a lot of teachers, I think, were already had right. plans or, or weren't Way, able to attend right. in the summer. So we're okay. looking for other ways to uh, provide that to our elementary staff. Okay. 
regarding the cultural proficiency yes, PD. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. And that, that has to be a, an ongoing, it can't just be one conference day or the right. next. So no, we're, we're looking not. to do this right. on an ongoing basis. Are there yeah. any other uh, any other changes that, that can be highlighted in the plan? From um, the the professional plan? development plan, we really, we, d we did a needs assessment last spring where we uh, sent out a survey to all staff to ask them for their feedback on the professional development that we provided last year. And then we really tailored the plan um, to increase some activities in the areas that staff requested. Um, ENL uh, strategies is something that has been requested. Um, <clears throat> data articulation, which our principals and our department heads do with their staff as well. Um, and a lot of those things are incorporated into our required professional development plan. And then we add other supports that were requested, such as technology, um, software support, are in the optional plan as well. Uh, so that we have teachers, we have our technology mentors and our coaches, they put together proposals that we offer throughout the year for staff to, um, to learn from. What uh, we, we didn't highlight before, and I, I can definitely highlight it now, the new teacher orientation and induction program is also an ongoing process in the district. I'd like to thank uh, Ms. McCoy for her efforts there. The group met over the summer. I think I mentioned that in August, but she, she already had her first meeting with the group after the school year began on classroom management techniques, which is an area that a lot of new teachers mm -hmm. tend to struggle with. So this is an ongoing process as well. So we're trying to cater our professional development needs to uh, teacher experience as well as to the needs of individual grade levels and departments. Okay. Uh, anybody else? All right, we had a motion and a second. All in favor? Thank you. And one more time. It is upon recommendation from the Superintendent of Schools that the Board of Education adopt the Attached Response to Intervention, RTI, Academic Intervention Services Plan for the 2019-20 school year. All right. Can I get a motion? I've got Christine and a second. Bill, any questions about the Response to Intervention Services Plan? All right. Then we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Very good. Thank you very much, Ms. McCoy. Mr. Polanski, that brings us to you. I am asking the board for approval of personnel items on Schedule 6, 8, 10, 13, 16, 20, and 22. All right. Much, much, much shorter list tonight. <laughs> Can I get a motion? Motion. Uh, great. From Tom and a second from Xavier. All in favor? Okay. Great. All right. And Dr. Acker. Okay, it is upon recommendation from the Superintendent of Schools that the Board of Education approve items I through O on this evening's business agenda. Okay. Can I get a motion for the business agenda? From Michelle in a second. From Linda, any questions or comments? All in favor? Great, thank you. And Christine, I think we had a couple donations. Yep, sorry, didn't have it up. You want me? I've got them up here. No. Okay. So the first one is from um, Mr. and Mrs. Patrick Black presenting a donation of two pairs of Sure SRH 4400 Professional Studio headphones with a value of $200 to the music department. So we thank them for that. And Ms. Celeste Morrissey, open that one. Um, presenting a donation of a Hardman Pecking Co Upright Piano to the music department also with an approximate value of $2,000. So we appreciate both of those donations. Thank you very much for your generosity. Thank you to them. <laughs> All right, a comment that... on the piano. Uh, we do get people on occasion who would like to donate a piano, and, and they really would like to help enhance what we have in the music department. But sometimes the pianos mm -hmm. that are donated or proposed to be donated will take a little bit more work than, than we can really accept. Uh, when Mr. Reynolds went to look at this piano, uh, he was as excited as one can get about yeah, a piano that actually, then, huh? he, yeah. he, he I think he framed it as he just wanted to he hit a scratch off or something like that. <laughs> we have a winner. So That's thank you to, to Ms. Morrissey. That's very nice. Um, all right. Well, this brings us to our second public commentary section. So same rules. If anybody would like to come up and say anything, the floor is yours. All right, then I'm going to throw it to my Board of Education trustees. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Yes, I didn't see you. Okay. 
Good evening. Yep. Take your time. Uh, well, my name is Kenny Yee. I have a, a one daughter in high school um, at um, 10th grade. And uh, um, so this, I know this is the first week of the class, so I'm happy to look at one of her books uh, because I'm a, a, mathematical, a mathematician by training, so always I look at a math book. So <laughs> then something, <laughs> then I immediately have something concerning is when I look at the book, uh, this is Algebra 2, Common Core Algebra 2 book for the Honors Algebra 2 class. Uh, there are 13 or 16 units, and there's only one unit that covers trigonometry. Um, and I, then I say, well, that doesn't feel like, you know, sufficient material to cover trigonometry, or algebra two. Uh, then, you know, so I read through the material, and I think, well, this must be little less than, you know, what a regular college, you know, um, calculus the class would expect the student to have. Because I, you know, when I was a graduate student, I taught a calculus on, uh, at a college level. Um, so then I went to the website, you know, um, internet, to look at a common core requirement. And uh, then I see the common core requirement clearly says, proves an application of addition and subtraction law of sines and cosine, you know, which is not, which <laughs> is missing in this book. You um, know what I would say is um, I, I think that you're going to be better served because I, I have a feeling I'm just going to guess yeah. that not one of the trustees at this table is going to be able to answer your very specific <laughs> no, question. It's not a specific question, but it's like, you know, so it's just my specific observation of okay. the lacking of, you know, some kind of overview of what math being taught in this school district. Okay. Uh, well, I would say that we can certainly share your concern with the, um, pass it to you. Yeah, I just want to, <laughs> I want to make sure that I have every concern that Mr. Yeah. Ring has on, on record here. Um, what I would suggest doing is giving me your contact uh, information, because yeah. they, they do use multiple resources. It's yeah. not just one textbook that sure, they use yeah. to present materials. So, yeah. you know, concepts can come from all different angles from different resources. So I, I think I'd suggest taking your information. Sure, and I having can write something, you know, in writing. I put something in writing, and I can, you know, email you the concern that but, I have. Or I can, if I take your contact information, I can have Mrs. Alfiero contact you directly. She's the chair of the sure. math department at sure. the high school, and I think it sure. may be a, a good productive sure. dialogue for you to engage in with her. Sure. Okay, uh, terrific. Should I, um, I can write something. Yeah, I, I have Absolutely. a pen at, at, at the end of the meeting. You can come okay. up here and We're talk like you. We're like two minutes from being done. done. Okay. So All right. thank <laughs> you very much, though. Uh, I appreciate yeah. your Sit comments. right in the front so that you can don't, don't just go sit right there. Don't go anywhere. Sit right <laughs> here. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, was there anybody else that wanted to come to the mic? I can just say that my daughter took that course last year, and there are packets besides that book that, that come home work. that they work on. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Okay, so and so that was a board member comment. Are there <laughs> any other board member comments? I do. Uh, I would be remiss not to uh, mention that the marching band will be having its home show uh, on in October, uh, but they are currently trying to raise money for their home show journal ads. Uh, if you go to the Band Parents of Huntington .net website, uh, you can take out a small ad for five dollars that'll support the band, or take a larger size ad out depending on your budget. Uh, the deadline, however, is uh, September 15th to do that. Um, so I just ask that if you do get the opportunity and would like to help uh, celebrate the home show, which does have a number of different school districts coming to our district uh, for the day, um, it would be uh, very nice of you. I have one comment. That's very nice. I need to get one in. Thank you, Tom. That was a nice plug for the Barton band. I have to send it to you. Okay. Well, I'm again. I'm not. I'm just sharing. Very nice. And also, I would be. I'd be remiss not to just mention George Austin, but but Dr. Acker and her work with with the summer projects as well. Yeah, you guys make a good team. Thank you very much for all your help with that and implementing that. Did you want to mention the? exciting July venture that the marching band is going to engage in, July 2020, July 4th, 2020? I'll that to you. Oh. Yeah, you okay. They are, up. Uh, apparently, they have been nominated as a Northeast representative to march in the July 4th parade in Washington, D.C., so they are wow. uh, getting their stuff <laughs> sure. together there uh, to get themselves moving and, and ready for that. Um, you know, a lot of the things that, that, that they do really 
they, they go notice to a certain extent, but the amount of work that they do between summer and I'm going to say the end of October when they go up to Syracuse, it's, it's enormous. It consumes so much time and they manage to get it all done. So um, another group that there's so many of them, Pride and Joy of Huntington, they, they are right up there. Um, please do come out and support. And, and we, we do have members in various family situations. None of them are denied an opportunity. We find a way to support all of them. So every one of them has, uh, regardless of the activity, all of our students have, have opportunities and resources are not an issue. So. Thank you. Thanks for the plug, too. That was very nice. They're a great group of kids. I have one comment really sure. quick. I got a text uh, with a list of all the events for this week, okay. one of them being the Board of, Board of Ed meeting. I don't know if that was a district-wide thing or that was just school-specific, but I really appreciated having that there. That was uh, that was all with help. Okay. So nicely done. Yeah, yeah. That, There's that was actually nice. a high school so each, PCA meeting tomorrow night. That, that, I'm sure that's so the text you I got get so. the board of ed meeting here, the SEPTA meeting, meet the teacher night, SEPTA meeting. It was it was good that's because so I always need it. I need to. Yeah, yeah. like <laughs> daily. That is so a nice thing. The communications that go home on I believe Sunday nights are consistent and I have to say uh, I look at them too because I, I get the That's receipts helpful. but Mr. Cusack uses the remind app uh, the, the other buildings are all sending connected messages home on five o'clock uh, six o'clock seven o'clock hours on Sunday nights and that includes the upcoming events for the week as well as uh, any other pertinent information that is relevant because if you give it to them too far in advance they, they tend to forget so that's why you need to see mm -hmm. it uh, up close that's the truth so thank you all right then I guess I'm looking for a motion to adjourn Tom and a second from Christine all in favor <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. Get home safely.